Hi, and welcome to another episode of The Caption Life, a podcast about how comics and pop culture impact life and society, and vice versa. Coming to you from deep in the heart of Texas, my name is Kevin, and joining me in the Zoom tree fort of friendship is my good buddy Sean in Indiana. Hello, everyone. Hey, before we get started with this episode, please hit the subscribe button on whatever podcast platform you're listening to us on, and follow us on social media, at Caption Life, on both Twitter and Instagram. You can find, also find more info about us and past episodes at podpage.com slash the caption life. I, I should talk like in third person from like, like I'm the host. <laughs> right. Uh, I went to the Ohio State University. <laughs> it's the pod page because it's right. the caption life. I, was, I didn't go to Ohio State. Um, go Buckeyes, though, for whatever. <laughs> it's worth. For all of our Ohio listeners. Yeah, for the three of you guys that are listening from Ohio, <laughs> enjoy that bowl of Cincinnati chili spaghetti. And there you go. Uh, <laughs> yes. Oh, Skyline is the best. So good. Okay, so when I get a chance to come visit you in Indianapolis, Sean, uh, we're going to drive over to Cincinnati. And, <laughs> and there's, actually a, a, there's actually a Skyline restaurant in Indianapolis that we can oh, go Oh, sweet. To. So we can get all the best parts of Ohio without having without to go to Ohio. Ohio. I'm sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> And now we just lost a few listeners. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, hey, on this episode of The Capsule Life, we're going to talk about uh, Mortal Kombat! That's crazy we did that both this time. Well, yeah, I mean, so, uh, I think everyone that grew up in the 90s, like, knows that, right? And that plays yeah. in their head all the time. Even even though they didn't have the song in this movie, mm-hmm. everyone's thinking that that grew up in the 90s. <laughs> right. It's the, the it's, it's this, this nostalgia thing. And I, I want to mm-hmm. go out on a limb here. Um, like, the time was right for a Mortal Kombat, like, reboot because we are so, uh, we are so, like, nostalgia hungry uh, right. for the things, especially in the 90s. Although... Mortal Kombat has been pretty steady over the last uh, 25, yeah, 20, 20, 25, 25, 30 years. Yeah. Uh, because they've put out like 17 video games. I'm not sure of the count. Uh, well, it's on Mortal Kombat 11, right? Yeah, so they're on 11. Yeah. But I don't, did they do one through 10? Like, is it Mortal Kombat 1, Mortal Kombat 2, Mortal Kombat 3, The Reckoning? <laughs> like, I know that some of those had like different names. Like, I know that there was a yeah. game called Shaolin Monks. Oh yeah, that's right. It was just, uh, there was yeah. a Sub Zero centered game, mm-hmm. so um, yeah, hey, I, I this don't know is, if it's count towards that or not, but yeah, this is a podcast about comics and pop culture, and and pop culture that applies to video games, so it's in the realm, right? But I like video games. I love video games. I have a son named after a video game, <laughs> but I'm not as an avid. Um, this is we're not we're not avid gamers here, so like. Please be, um, I guess, mindful in your comments. Then, <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, like I, I haven't worked a callus into my thumb in quite some time. <laughs> I know. I mean, I think we both grew up being gamers, and I just started getting back into gaming like just a couple of years ago. But just like you said, not like to the same intensity as you know all the all the young ones, right? <laughs> right. Well, I mean, I have kids that play um, at school. I have kids that play. Uh, Smash Brothers Ultimate, like on their yeah. Nintendo Switch lights, right uh, at lunchtime. And yeah. like yesterday, I was like actually working lunch duty, um, because we had a power outage at school, which was crazy. So that's a crazy thing to experience. But right, uh, so the kids were like, there were a handful of kids playing Nintendo at lunch because it's 2021. Like, what the hell? Right. <laughs> uh, but every every time that I would walk up on one, I would like lean in real close, and I would be like. Get over here. <laughs> and then some smarmy kid would look up and be like, bro, wrong game. <laughs> so you should be but, like, or is it? <laughs> right. I was like, wrong it's a wrong franchise, but I, I'm in the realm, okay? I'm, right. I'm in, yeah. the, I'm in the same it's at the same stadium. <laughs> hey, uh, but that's what we're here to talk about. We're gonna talk about Mortal Kombat, the the new movie that uh premiered in theaters and on HBO Max. Mm-hmm. Uh and we're recording this on uh, the first of but the first of May, so it, it's been a week. We both had a chance to watch it. Sean and I are both parents, so we had to. We, I I had to like watch mine at like eleven thirty at night, like after yeah. my kids had gone to bed. Yeah. Yep. Me too. I I watched actually. I think I watched mine while Riley was at school. I I took my lunch and um, early morning to to watch it. So. Yeah. I uh I told my son who's twelve who asked if he could watch it, and I said, "Is your room clean?" 
because when your room is clean, you're old enough to watch Mortal Kombat. <laughs> and it, it's been a week, and let me say that he is still not old enough to watch Mortal Kombat. He will watch Mortal Kombat 2021 when it's like 2048. Yeah. <laughs> I finally cleaned my room, Dad. I'm 38. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sean, what did you think of the movie uh, Mortal Kombat? Yeah, and, and we, you and I have not talked about what we thought about this movie. So this is going to be no, the first time that first we, time, yeah, that we know like what the other person. We thinks texted of this. each other to say, "Hey, we want to talk about it on the podcast," and then we saved that conversation for the podcast. Right. Yeah. So, um, so here, what I would, this is how I would describe Mortal Kombat and what I thought about it. So basically, the best description I could come up with is if you like video game nostalgia and can overlook everything else that makes a film good, then this is a movie for you. But if you get hung up on like major plot holes missing, <laughs> then you're going to not like this movie. Like I, I actually wrote this on my, I wrote a review on my Instagram account um, about the movie. And like I gave it two out of 10 stars because I just two. thought it was really terrible. Two out of 10. I know. And That's the only brutal. reason why I gave it two. That's a brutal finish. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah <laughs> fatality um but yeah it's um and the I, I just thought it was a terrible movie <laughs> in terms of the art like the in terms of the film and the genre right like just okay. the, or the art form because th there was just so many issues i had with it that i think the only reason why it's doing the way it, it's doing is because everybody loves the fact that it's based on one of their favorite video games you know but and then it's new and we've been deprived of new things a lot over the last year and a half yeah exactly yeah so i i, I won't go to too many details because i'm sure we'll talk about it um, a little bit further in this episode but like overall i just i was not impressed i thought it was just a waste of my time and and it's just not something i'm going to you know watch again so like one of the bright sides of uh covid19 and the and the and you know us living through it is that uh we probably would have spent money to go see it in a movie theater and we didn't have to do that because we would have yeah <laughs> Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, I wonder how much I wonder how much that goes into like the way people are talking about it. Like, yeah, it was pretty good. And mm -hmm. but if they just if they just spent seventeen dollars on a ticket and you know another twenty five on like popcorn and soda or whatnot, would they still feel like it was right. worth like that investment? Um, yeah. I also I agree with you. Like it was not a good movie. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> like. Uh, <laughs> This is we're not going to get invited uh, to do anything for New Line for a while. <laughs> right. This is. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is, it wasn't it wasn't good to me. Um, yeah. So here's what here's my, where I will start my thoughts. Same yeah. thing. I, I felt like in terms of like the visuals, a lot of the, they did a lot of the visuals well, um, mm -hmm. but it just it bothers me that with 11 video games of story to pull from mm -hmm. that that the story was so bad. Right. <laughs> and, um, spoiler alert, you know, hey, you, you know what, one, one of the things that we got to do, and we can leave this in this podcast to remind us to do it in future podcasts is when we talk about things, we have to make sure we give spoiler alerts. I know. Cause I don't know how many people tuned in to hear us talk about Falcon and the winter soldier. Right. And we never said it. <laughs> Although I gotta so, say, spoiler like, alert it, for, if you're listening to a podcast and it has like, and it says like, you're doing a review of this, I would think that yeah, I think, spoiler I think you would be implied. Before, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Spoiler exactly. alert. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should start putting it on the on the graphic just to make sure. Right. Some people yeah. Too. Anyway. <laughs> but like my mom isn't going to like watch Mortal Kombat. She may may listen to this podcast and she was like, oh, you ruined it for me, Kevin. I was going to watch it. <laughs> my mom's not going to watch it because my mom was outraged when we got the game. When I was <laughs> <Right>. in, <laughs> like junior high. Yeah. Yeah. I know that I've told that story. To when Madden was in here and he called me a huge hypocrite over it, but like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I got Mortal Kombat for the sake of Genesis, like, uh, because I returned a, a Christmas gift from a, from a grandparent to Target, like when Target was new to our area. Right. And they were like, oh, here's, here's your $50 worth of credit back. <laughs> and they were like, what do you want to get? And I was like, I'm getting Mortal Kombat. Right. <laughs> uh, and we got, we got Street Fighter 2 as well. My mom wasn't happy about right. it. But, um, so like getting back to what we were talking about, um, the story, does it just didn't do anything for me? The visuals um, were cool. Mm -hmm. The fatalities were interesting. Although I they I felt like they built up the the hype on the fatalities a little too 
much because I'm not a gore person. Right. But like I didn't think that any there was anything um crazy. There was one um that was like that's pretty intense, but everything else was kind of like like I you know yeah. I've seen Deadpool. Right. So <laughs> Yeah. I mean it, it wasn't like um necessarily like blood everywhere. I mean there was definitely blood but it, it was just like interesting ways, yeah, it's interesting ways to kill people, like very disturbing, which again, that's that's just how the game was, too. But like, I think there's a difference between seeing it in the game and seeing it in a cinematic form, you know? True. Like if you didn't know that that was coming, you you were either you probably got invited to somebody to, with somebody <laughs> to see the movie or I don't know. I don't know what the circumstances would be that you didn't expect that in a Mortal right, Kombat movie. Right, exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah. The but the story itself wasn't wasn't great. Mm -hmm. And I I will even like I know that I read some things knocking that the biggest part that they didn't like about the story was the fact that there was no actual tournament. (laughs) Um, And I didn't I didn't mind that so much because I felt like, okay I know what they're doing with this. They're trying to set this up the franchise right. for the future. Oh, we're going to dis we're going to disrupt and we're not going to have a tournament here. We're trying to stop it before it right. starts. And then, you know, at the climax of the movie, you know, it the it's going to continue mm-hmm. and it's going to build um and hope and probably hopefully to a better movie but also like to a, a movie with an actual um an right. actual tournament in it and i could sense that when i didn't know all of the the bad characters like the characters that showed up um besides goro right. with the four arms some of the other characters that like that get fatalityed along right. the way were characters that show up in like subsequent games are not part of the original right. roster. And I was like, if you don't know who that dude is, if the, if the average person doesn't know who that dude is, that person's right. going to die. <laughs> and I was right. I predicted, I yeah. predicted it all. Um, and that, that bothered me. But um, from a film, from a filmmaking standpoint, and like, I'm not a filmmaker, I, I don't really have any right to like criticize this, but it just seems like the person who directed mm-hmm. the film had a lot of experience with directing action and was like astute to the CGI elements right. of it. Like the fights and stuff were, were decent whatnot, but the acting is yeah. terrible. Like, like the, like he just, it's not somebody that, that somebody that like, that looks at the camera with their fingers, right. like <laughs> the framing, you know, like in a, right. in a rectangle, yeah. the framing, they got that down. But like part of directing a film is directing your actors is getting them to, to invoke the performance that you want them to. Right. And they were just kind of flat um, and, and stale and, and uh, you know, it's what the genre of video game filmmaking right. is known for. Well, and, and I think, you know, honestly, I think the acting wasn't like too bad because I think it was just that the writing of it was so terrible that <laughs> they had to do like the best they could. Right. I mean, like, mm-hmm. and that's the thing, like going back to what you were saying about those characters, like, first of all, I've got to say, I, I know introducing characters can be a little bit of a struggle in, in the movie and for the first time, but like, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, but you know, Shang, Shang Shung, who like introduces the characters in a very like non natural way, like, no one ever introduces people like that, right? Like, how Goro shows mm-hmm. up, he's like, ah, Goro, the prince of blah, blah, blah. I forget the, you know. <laughs> You know, the yeah. Prince of Blood or whatever. I'm just like, who talks to people like that? Like, like if you showed up at my house, I'm not gonna be like, ah, oh, Kevin of the Stalickers of of Texas. <laughs> right. You know, like, <laughs> although maybe I should just to make life interesting, but like that's just how they introduce the characters. Like the the and you know, just like you said, there were some of these characters that were from subsequent games that I never played, and so I didn't really know these characters and. Like you still don't at the end of it, like you know their name, and then you know that they die. Like, <laughs> like the uh, right. General uh, Raiko, right? The guy with the big yes. hammer. Like, never heard of him before. I'm like, okay, General Riker. Like, he seems like he's a bad dude. Um, he does. I don't think he says anything. No, he doesn't. He, I've I've seen that dude in yeah. two movies. Okay, the other I recognized him immediately. He was like the big boss goon in Mad Max Fury right. Road. Yeah. And he doesn't say anything in that movie. He just, I guess, gnarls yeah. at dying. He's also in uh, Troy, too. Yeah. Okay. I, I looked him up on IMDb. He's, he's actually in Troy. I, I forget what um, character, but I mean, I'm sure it's like one of the army like characters. Because the guy's like, here's the thing. Here's the kicker. So since we're talking about this, that guy who plays General Riker, Riko, is 6'11 mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. real life, right? Like, the guy is oh, huge. Oh, wow. Yes. That's a big dude. And then the guy who plays Goro... 
is like 6'3", so he's not short, but like if you ever get a chance, look at their profiles at IMDb because the guy who plays General Raiko, like he's smiling, but you can look at him and be like, okay, he seems like a tough dude. And so were some of the other characters that they show. Like even, uh, you know, like even the ones that weren't like as tough as the other ones, like they still come mm-hmm. across as like stone cold. And then when you look at the guy that plays Goro, he straight up looks like he is like high off of a drug and really confused looking at the wall. Like, <laughs> I was just like, this is the guy who played Goro. Like, I feel like this, this role should have been swapped, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm, and I take it that that's probably motion, like capture. Probably. Yeah. That, that they did. <laughs> it's just really yeah, interesting. It, when I saw this picture, I'm like, oh man. <laughs> I was actually thinking about this this morning, how like that character, like the general Raiko character, there's always a video game character. That's like the, the first one you fight because he's big and slow. So he's like the Zangief <laughs> of, uh, of Mortal right. Kombat. Um, but that, that wasn't the, like in the old game, that wasn't the case with Goro. Goro was hard to beat and he was like, he could take a punch. So, you know, you had, you had to work at it for a while. Um, and I will say that the Goro, the Goro is a major improvement over like the 1995 uh, version. Yeah. Like we've come a long way in special right. effects, but I mean, he he couldn't he couldn't save. Well, that. and that's the thing is like the one in '95, like CGI wasn't well enough for them to be able to pull that off, which is why it was mostly animatronics, you know. But I mean, right. you know, again, back in '95, like that was you know cutting edge for that time, and so people was just like, oh, this looks like so real and everything. And and this one, like you could tell it's CGI, but I mean, it, it's still pretty good in terms of the visual aesthetics and how natural it looked and everything. But mm-hmm. but again, you know, it's just I think going back to the story, it just none of it really made sense a whole lot in terms of like all this character development. So like what we talk about, like General Raiko is somebody that introduced like one time and then he gets, you know, killed off. Like they don't develop that character or any other characters, you know, which is why I'm just like, this is terrible writing because basically what they, what they're feeding off of is what makes the game popular. And they know that people are going to love it because of that. And the, and the best character, Kano, Kano had the best lines, (laughs) uh, you know, in his performance hit the guy who, that was, that played uh, Kano was very, it was very over the top. Um, It was good. (laughs) <laughs> and I'm glad that I I don't know if in the video game if Kano is Australian, but I'm glad that they picked somebody and he did an like he he did it in his native like um his native uh what's the word I'm looking uh, for dialect uh, accent accent yeah he did it in his right. native accent because like that could have very easily been like an American like character because he's so brash right. and you know like he just is just another like. American that thinks that he's, you know, big and right. tough and whatnot. I'm glad that they gave it to somebody else in in the world. So cheers to diversity for that. Well, I, I think the um, 95 movie Kano is Australian too. He's the guy that played Kano in 95 is British, but did it with an right, Australian right. accent. And, and that may be why it like right. continued, um, uh, the, why it continued with mm-hmm. this character. Um, but he was the, I thought his performance was great, but of course, you know, they had him break right. bad and and then he ends right. up dying, which we all saw that coming and, a mile away, didn't we? <laughs> right. We all yes. knew that at some point, but, but Sonya Blade was going to kill him and that's how she was going to get in the tournament. Like, <laughs> OK, <laughs> right. The point the point though that I wanted oh, to bring sorry. up was that the <laughs> no, no, seriously, the, the no, it's fine. No, but you're right. I mean, there's the I just trying to remind myself so I don't go too far down the <laughs> rabbit hole. Um it's like that was the best part of the movie, and he's guaranteed not to be right. in part two. <laughs> Although, actually, I saw something on social media that said that the guy who plays him actually thinks that he might be coming back somehow. So oh, that'd be man. interesting to see. Like zombie, right? zombie Kano. Uh, oh my gosh, that would be a good way to bring him in. <laughs> like, can you imagine? Because then, like, right. that actually be genius if they if they're able to do a second movie, they can actually go that route, and then if they're smart enough, like, then they can create a. A video game that's like utilizing zombie because like zombies like all the rage in terms of yeah it's another yeah it's just another genre another that you know thing. it's like oh you know we're running out of ideas let's like add zombies to it and then all of a sudden you know it's like mm-hmm. this whole new world of um, money making <laughs> opportunities for people well and there's like 40 playable characters in the the latest um yeah uh mortal kombat game but there's like the terminator yeah. and rambo and like there's a bunch of really yeah 
off the wall yeah. things in there. It has made me like want to play that. It's one of the things that's on my summer to do list is I want to play uh, Mortal Kombat. Mortal, the story in Mortal Kombat's a lot like it is in Injustice, mm-hmm. where it can branch. Like there's p- places where it branches to. So there's like three different right. endings. It seems like even though you pay fifty dollars, you know, sixty dollars for a, that video game, you get your money's worth out of the entertainment because. At least then, if you don't like this ending, you can go back and play it from this point and have a, a, a different ending, which um, the only ending that the movie had was, I right. mean, bad. <laughs> I mean, it's just like it set it up for the sequel and whatnot, but it's, it's you know, nobody was like, I'm, nobody nobody walked out of there like, like yeah, give me more <laughs> of that. Although, you know, I, I looked on IMDb and apparently it got like a 44 out of 100 rating, which I'm like. I still feel like that was generous. And again, I think it's because, you know, we, we got the, the traditional fanboys who are like loving it for whatever reason. Cause it's interesting. Right. I was talking to my brother about it and I was telling, cause we all grew up loving mortal Kombat, and I was telling him how it was a terrible movie. And then he shared with me a message that his neighbor, you know, watched a movie and he was like, Oh, it's so great. It's awesome. I was just like, I'm like, go watch own. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You should like, watch it and make up your, <laughs> make up your own mind. We're not trying to that, sway anybody. We're just letting you right. know our thoughts. Um, right. Yeah. The only the the last thing I will will touch on for from my perspective is that mm-hmm. um, for the most part I liked the casting. I think that um, they wasted the actor that plays Scorpion because he really just has the 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 beginning scene and then like the final fight scene. Um, right. And and he's a like he's a phenomenal actor. I, I'm not yeah. going to attempt to say his name because he's Japanese and and I don't want to butcher it. Um, I know. Yeah. But he's, you know, he's I read a review that said, you know, that he's been bringing um, he's been bringing credit uh, or a special special presence to movies since uh, his his role in uh, The Last Samurai in 2003. I'm like, yeah, you know what? I've never seen him in something bad. He's always he's always he does does, a great job, does a great job. And he's been in several Marvel features. He's he played he played the the main baddie in um, in Wolverine. Oh, that's right. And yeah. then he yeah. was um, he he was he had one scene in Endgame. He fought uh, Hawkeye in Endgame in the right. rain. Um, yep. But there's a there's a that's really right. great Danny Boyle movie called Sunshine. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're going to go down this tangent of like, oh, I saw this guy and he's been this are, those are all the things he's been <laughs> in. But if you've never seen Sunshine, <laughs> Sunshine is a great uh, is a great movie. And he, he's in that as well. So like right. the casting, I felt was a little bit a little bit off, a little bit stiff. But the thing that the thing that um really really stood out to me was the casting of of Shang Tsung right uh, because and I'm I'm not going to say this act I I don't know the actor's name too but I I do know him from other things and he played the accountant in uh in in the dark, dark night Rises. yeah or the dark night yeah the yeah. dark night he plays the accountant <laughs> that steals all the people's all the uh the criminals money in the dark night and Batman has to go to Hong Kong to get him um right. he's just not imposing or intimidating like in in that role, um, I know he seems I, like a substitute teacher. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. I, he's I like feel like his to costume be, is like trying to make up for yeah, it, right? He's like trying to be badass, but he's just really not like pulling it off. Not the same way I that know. the uh, the actor um, in ninety five yeah, movie did. Yeah, I, he, that guy did a fantastic job of Sing Sung. Yeah. Like he just he pulled. Your brother's soul it's gonna be is really, mine. Yeah, <laughs> like he just jump. did a great job. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's going to be like really hard to do. But yeah, even like the the um the classic lines um from the game just felt very forced in this movie, mm-hmm. you know. And 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 again, that's why I'm just like if you liked all the call outs and this nostalgic feature of like I'm seeing what I play in a movie, mm-hmm. like I think yeah, then it's a great movie if you just look at it from that really small lens, right? But uh going back to what you were talking about with like Scorpion and Sub-Zero, I I got to say the reason why I gave it two out of ten is that I thought that story of um, the rivalry between B Han, who turns into Sub Zero, and Hanzo, who turns mm-hmm. into Scorpion, I thought that was actually a really great writing and really like the best part, like the first five ten minutes of the movie where they're setting mm-hmm. that up, like you know, in sixteen hundreds. Like I thought that was actually probably the, the best part of the movie because they did a great job like writing that up. Like yeah, there's some issues I still have it. Like you have no idea still why Bihan hated Hanzo. Right. <laughs> you, you just know like it's for the Lin Kuei. I'm just like and you know for the average person like who the hell is the Lin Kuei? Right. Why does he hate them so much? But I, I thought it was a missed opportunity because 
I think that could have been a, a movie on its own. Absolutely. Where it was centered around that. And, and it's centered around Cole, which I understand why they did that. But I think like that was a really great um, story that they could have developed a lot more. They didn't. And I, I really w- hope that they, you know, do more with that in the future, whether it's like a, you know, just a standalone movie between those two or they incorporate them more in the second movie. But, you know, I, I gotta say, it's just, I feel like it's a missed opportunity. Like, for example, when Scorpion all of a sudden shows up out of nowhere and he's like tells Cole, who's, you know, his ancestor mm-hmm. or, his, you know, Hanzo's his ancestor. He's like, you have freed me. Like, I just want to be like, how the hell did he free you? Like, what? Well, here's the thing, too. Like, like. <laughs> All the other bad guys were from like different realms and whatnot, but uh, Sub Zero was was from Earth. He was from ancient China, and Cabal was a mercenary from Earth. From, from Earth. So I guess, right. like, I guess if you have the the mark, you can be recruited to either either side. Yeah. Like, right. what kind of jacked up a hole chooses the Nether Realm of like you got to fight for <laughs> Earth, and you're choosing the other side? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Right, and, and Kano does the same, same thing. thing. Like, and what he what is what is they promising you? Like, you should see the Netherworld before before you sign up for that team because it just kind of seemed like a barren wasteland. It's not like you were going to be sitting at the Hard Rock by the pool with chicks and bikinis, brother. Like, it's right. that's not the future that this this in, entails for you. So, like, you got to do right. your research. You got to come prepared. <laughs> you gotta, you, right. Like, like I don't care. I don't care how bad our planet is, and sometimes it can be a really terrible place. Right. But I'm, I'm not signing up to fight <laughs> yeah. for anybody else. Right. <laughs> so, hey, I, you know what? Yeah. I don't. I, you know, you mentioned the 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 rating. I was gonna I was gonna say this. Uh, where do you think that it falls in the pantheon of like video game adaptations in terms of in terms of a rating? I'm looking at a list uh. on Rotten Tomatoes, and there yeah. are there are 45 video game movies ranked best to worst. I'm going to see yeah. where do you think this one falls? <laughs> you know, I just give me a number one, I, to, one to 45. I'm, I'm going to say it's in the top 10 right now because of the timing of it. OK, because I think it, just like what you said, I think everybody's been itching for a, you know, really exciting, you know, video game movie. I, I think it's rating high right now. Mm-hmm. But I would say like in five or 10 years, that's going to shift and it's probably going to go down towards the lower end. Yeah, it, I, I really it's currently so. at number four. With Gee, a, what? With a 54% <laughs> rating. Um, what? <laughs> by comparison, the Mortal Kombat Annihilation sequel from 1997 is number 44. That's second to last <laughs> well, place. Well, I can understand that. Um, <laughs> Annihilation I, was not that great. No, it's not. You know, but like I didn't know that when I was like, you know, 14 when, when I saw it or whatever. Um, right. Because back then it was still like, this is Mortal Kombat. This is everything that we've ever wanted. Right. Um, yeah. I I just I don't think that a lot of video games I don't think a lot of video games were meant to be adapted for the screen. Um, I think I think there's a lot to like playing the story out. But like when you can live the story in a video game, why would you want to why would you want to spend the money just to go watch the same story? I mean, I guess it could be said for the same thing for comic book films. And I think most comic book adaptations do a great job of of tweaking things. Right. In the story so that it's not the same thing that you you saw on the panels and pages. But the Mm -hmm. video games like there's just not enough. There's just not enough story there. As a matter of fact, some of the video game like adaptations that are on this list are not like they're not like, okay, the Angry Birds movie is is pretty high. But that's (laughs) like that's just a movie using those characters. It's not the same. Right. Yeah. And it's uh, let me see what else was on here. Um Tomb Raider. I mean, well, Tomb- the, the, the po- very Pokemon, first one. Pokemon movies. Okay. Oh the, yeah. The Pokemon movies <laughs> too. Like, like there, there's a, you know, people love the Pokemon, the game and the, the anime that comes along with it, but that's not right. really an adaptation of the actual video game. It's just using some of the elements that like in the right. shared universe. So maybe right. what we need to do for, um, a future episode is, is come and talk about our, our favorite, uh, video game adaptations. We can, we can pick our, we should, our Mount Rushmore of, sh- yeah. of Schlack or Schlock or what <laughs> our Mount Rushmore hey. video game adaptations. And what we should do is like get our listeners to give us like their favorite and their least favorite or their worst video game adaptation. We can read on that episode and sweet. We should do that. Yeah. Put a poll up. Yeah. We should do that. Yeah. And we'll mention them and everything and see what people have to say about that. Yeah. 
Okay. But yeah, we definitely should because, I, and I think it's interesting because just like what you said, you know, I, I can't think of a single like video game movie that could be at the same level, like what you said, like a comic book movie that, uh, you know, Marvel or even like, you know, 89 Batman mm -hmm. and everything. Like, I, I don't think it's it's There's, ever risen to that success. Right. And I don't know if it ever there, will. There is, there, I can think of a handful of comic book movies. I'm sorry, uh -huh. uh, video game movies that I like, but I right. can't say that they are good. You know what I mean? I, I mean, right. I like, yeah. just because I like them doesn't mean that they're right. necessarily good. And we will save that conversation for... Yes. Uh, for later, because that's that's going to be good stuff. All right. right. So Mortal Kombat 2021. Is it great? No. Is it for is it <laughs> worth a watch? I guess. If you have nothing else to do. Yeah. <laughs> and you already have HBO Max. If you're already paying friend. for HBO Max. Give it a give it a watch. Right. Um, I wouldn't even say even if you're paying for it. I'm like only if you're using your account from somebody yeah, else. If you've got your parents <laughs> HBO Max account, give it a watch. Right. If it's if you're using my mom's HBO account, you're going <laughs> to you're going to have to answer those tough questions because she's going to find out and you're going to be in trouble. <laughs> and that wraps up another episode of The Caption Life. We hope you enjoyed uh, listening to this uh, discussion. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button on whatever major podcast platform you listen to. You can also find us on Twitter and Instagram at Caption Life. And if you like what we're doing, give us a shout out or tag us in your post. For more information about us and all of our previous episodes, please visit podpage.com slash the caption life. Until next time, thanks for listening. Get out of here. Bruh.